Well, hello, friends. Um, today we are going to do something very different because I am very tired after starting a new job this week. Um, so I don't really have the energy to program today, but um, I'm going to get back to it. Um, but today I thought we would look at some old Serenity versions. Um, and I picked six, uh, six different points in time here. Um, and I thought I would show you what it looked like. Uh, at that time. So here is the, um, the last day before I imported a kernel into the repository. And um, I'll talk about the kernel in, in the next uh, part, but um, I wanted to show you uh, what the, um, the little GUI library that I was working on just before um, starting to work on the kernel. So this is what it was like. And it was um, this is like an SDL um, frame buffer that I'm drawing pixels into and I also have like a little test uh, it looks like shit down here um, can I fix this maybe? Uh, yeah okay yeah so it, it doesn't do any escape sequences really or anything but I had like a little test terminal thing here that I was working on and um, this is all just running on my Linux machine on Linux uh, and just wanted to play around with like um, an event loop, um, some widgets and stuff, and I got kind of farish with it. Like uh, it has keyboard inputs, um, and you can drag these things around a little bit. As you can see here, like the Z order doesn't really work. And um, what else? I guess there's not really that much exciting to say about this, but uh, this is what it looked like and. Over here, you can see like it's constantly spewing the event stream. Um, but this was very early on, so this was before there was even a kernel. And then um, on the next day, I imported the kernel. So the kernel was this tiny little uh, toy kernel that I uh, wrote like earlier in 2018, and um, it was it was really really crappy. But um, I, at least I had a place to get started which was my own code, so I didn't have to start from someone else's. Um, and this is what it looked like when it booted. So it wasn't like interactive or anything. Um, it, it was called Gerbert. It was named after um, a flower that I had in my window here. Um, and I, I named the flower Gerbert for some reason. Anyway, um, so this is what it looked like when it booted. It couldn't do anything. Um, the most impressive thing about it here is that um, it would read out a file from the XT2 file system and it said good morning hermit in it. Uh, and I don't know what that was about. It was something about how I, I guess I had um, rented a cabin to go live by myself and I felt like a hermit at the time. So this was like a good morning message to myself because all I was doing was just working on this. Um, so that's what it looked like right after I imported the kernel. And then we go forward like two months and it's New Year's Eve and I've been working on this for a while and I'm using the box emulator at this point and it boots up into a shell and go run some commands and stuff and we see the, um, the dates here in the LS are like Unix timestamps. Um, I wonder if it can do something like figlet. Nah. I figured it used to work, but it's crashy. Um, and let's see what kind of programs we had at the time. It's a very, very um, fragile system. Make a directory, foo. No space left. Well, maybe we can run the little test program I had. Yeah, so this just <laughs> counts to 100,000. Very fancy. But, uh, you know, multitasking was working and there was some uh, interactive stuff with like keyboard input and you could traverse the file system and, and load executables. So stuff was going forward, it was happening. Um, and then, um, I think it was like two weeks later, I felt like the kernel was like good enough that I could try to put the, um, the GUI from earlier on it. So this is the, this is like right after I managed to do that. And I just got it running, basically. 
and as you can see, it's not fast. But uh, can I get the mouse? Yes. I managed to get the mouse working, and I was using this um, red cross as the cursor, and it's just incredibly slow. It's just um, I think it was just mem copying like the whole screen on every frame or something like that. Something ridiculous. Um, and uh, but you can see like the the widget library from earlier that was running on SDL is now actually running here, and it even has like some stuff like focus happening and, and like keyboard input goes to the widgets and moo. You can yeah, we can even create a new window. So uh, I was very very excited and now it crashed and because we ran out of memory, <laughs> which was very very common back then. Um, so that was when we just got the GUI running on the kernel. And then a month later, I've been, I got like super excited about the GUI working. So I just started working hardcore on it, um, improving it. So after a month working on the GUI, we uh, were here. Or, uh, well, this doesn't look right. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> a little bit of a repaint issue there. So, yeah, so after a month I had like this new looking stuff, I had some um, some custom fonts that I made, um, and at, like the start of a little launcher app, and I had a clock here, um, and even a nice cursor, and, and, and I had a wallpaper, so I could load wallpapers, although it, it didn't load PNG images, you had to like, um, you had to create a special format that was like raw RGBA. Um, pixel data and oh yeah and I also had the font editor that I was using to make the font I mean I still have it but um, back then it was like the new hotness and this was the file manager back then which it wasn't really a file manager it was just a way to browse the directory tree but I thought it was really really cool um, and this was the GUI test app the first GUI app that I ever made this is all that it did. You just click on it and it changes color. Um, so, I mean, I guess we can see what's in the um, shell here this time. So, yeah, we can see we have a couple more programs. We have the message. Um, right. So all the Windows Server stuff <laughs> used to be in the um, used to be in the kernel. So you can see here that like um, you're seeing window server messages in the um, kernel log. And I think it was like um, it was it was really really painful to move the Windows Server to user space, but um, I mean it took me it took me like uh, about a week and a half or something, uh, just refactoring everything and um, implementing Unix local domain sockets and shared bitmaps and all kinds of stuff. So this was before that and. Still to this day, I, I feel like the performance was just slightly better when everything was in the kernel, but that's just not meant to be. Uh, but it doesn't matter. We can make it go fast now too, it's just we have to use different tricks. And then, around this time, um, I sort of took a little break uh, from Serenity for, I think, two weeks or something, and I was working on my uh, other project, which is my um, uh, PC emulator, Computron, and because I decided that I wanted to get uh, Windows 3.0 working, so I spent like, I don't know how much time, uh, a lot of time, and it's still a bit flaky, but will it work? Yes, it does. Um, but I did get Windows 3 working pretty well, and um, I got Visual Basic working, which I was very happy with, because I, I wanted to get this running so that I could look at the, um, the UI and play around with it, just to feel what it was like, um, just to get some inspiration, I guess. Um, and I was very excited about this, but after like uh, like two weeks of, of playing around with this, I just got, I just 
really wanted to get back to, to Serenity, so I, I gave up on this um, whole Copytron thing, and I haven't really touched it since, actually. Um, but that was just a, like a little intermission there. And then, finally, uh, this is after I got back to Serenity, and then I spent another month working on the GUI. Um, and this is what we were looking like then. Plop. So, so you can see it's starting to look a lot more uh, similar to its current day self. Um, you know, the windows look a bit different and stuff is a bit flatter, but, uh, you know, it has the, the current day font is there. And, um, we got like the launcher looking launchy. We even have the file manager, although it doesn't have like the icon view or the tree view or anything, but it's a bit more interactive. You can't double click still, but I think you can open files. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Oh, I remember I was, I was really excited that um, you could um, select anywhere you wanted in the text document and it didn't perform like shit, even though the text document was huge. Um, took some cleverness. <laughs> um, let's see what we have in the bin directory here. Oh, yeah, DF. Oh yeah, I remember making this. Just wanted to know how much space was available on the disk. Uh, so that was, uh, but that was like basically, this was like um, not that long after this is when I made the first video. So like the, um, the March 2019 Serenity OS demo <coughs> video that, um, that really um, blew up, I guess you could say. And um, so, so if you want to see how this continues, you can just go and watch that. And um, from then on, like I started doing like really regular videos and stuff. So um, I guess I don't really have to continue this process here. Uh, but yeah, so this is what I wanted to show you quickly today. Just um, a little tour of um, how the system got up to speed. So um, I guess that's it. Um, if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time, hopefully with some, some programming. See you.